Alrighty then, mic check, mic check. Welcome aboard, ladies and gentlemen. We have a lot to cover here tonight. We are doing a video here on the Mac V latest, uh, latest updates and strategies. I'm gonna turn that music on down and get right into it. We got a whole lot to cover. So of course, if you are brand new with us, make sure you are following us over here on Facebook and skip on the Twitter, hit us up on Parlor, Instagram, and here on YouTube, of course. If you're not in our Discord chat, you're gonna be missing out. I'm gonna show you guys how to get into the menu sections here tonight, but this is the chat for that, uh, for all the other uh, traders we've got here, and of course, the link down there in the description to get into that Discord chat. You're gonna need to know how to do that. Let's get into these new features here tonight, and let's show you how to get them all set up. Let's do this. Alrighty then, let's come on down here to our trade window. Uh, where did I go? Hold on a second. There we go, there I am. Welcome aboard, hopefully you guys can see me all right. And let me know if you guys can hear me all right as well. It looks like the sound volume is still a little bit too loud on that music. Let me make sure that is down to zero, zero, one. Why can't I go to one? Can I press one? One second. No. All right. Hopefully that is all right. And let's get into some of this. So let's bring on down our, I've got a uh, dev box example set up here. If you are a first time installer, this is what your setup is going to look like for a single screen. Again, when you are installing the AlgoBox product, yes, it's going to come out of the box with a standard 1080p in mind. Again, everybody's got all different configurations. It would be impossible for us to set up, you know, our system for people who have six screen setups, four screen setups, three screen setups, two screen setups, one's above, one's below, one's on the right and the left, all that kind of good stuff. Now we do allow people to share workspaces. So another reason why you should be there in our Discord chat, if somebody's got a setup that matches yours, like somebody's got, uh, we've had a couple members just recently got the awesome three screen vertical setup. Looks really, really nice. Those of you guys can share your workspaces together who have multiple instruments set up. But out of the box, you are gonna be set up for a standard 1080p. This is normal, um, kind of standard high definition back in the day. Now the new standard, of course, is 4K. 4K because that is four times the resolution of standard HD, meaning that uh, potentially you could have four screens inside of one if you had the proper size according to you know that you have to be able to visually see things so we won't get into a whole lot of that tonight if you want to know about hardware stuff go check out our hardware series you will need to make sure that your system is a boss in order to do some of this so i've got here a simulation setup here that we're going to go through and walk through the new setups now what is the most important thing you should note if you are coming in and installing the new stuff i know most of you guys who have been with us for a while can recognize it right away Right here in the center Mac V filtering section, this is the main uh, feature change that you want to be taking a look at here tonight. I'm gonna show you guys some really neat stuff that you can do with this that, uh, you know, look, you, most of you guys should have already been doing some of these things already, but now we have enhanced this a little bit for another piece of the visual to really just kind of give you that pinpoint entry, make you an even lazier profitable trader. Again, look, there are a thousand, 10,000 ways to trade. Not very many of those profitable long-term, but we are looking for long-term success. And of course, the simplest way is the best way. Occam's razor principle. So let me show you how we do this on the Mac V filtering. Now you should be familiar again. Uh, we've got something in our room. If you are inside of our discord channel, I'll bring discord over. Um, Cause you do need to kind of know, where to go and find these things. We do have a little thing in our room that says, trade nothing alone. This also applies to my videos, okay? Take no single video alone by itself, okay? Now, some of these, there are exceptions to that, lengthier videos where I go all encompassing for certain strategies, yes, but you need to go back and watch our additional videos to throw in the things. Everything you're gonna see here tonight, take those in context with lessons, particularly one through six, which we call the core. So if you haven't gone through those, make sure you get through those. And tonight on the Mac V, I'm gonna show you two other videos that uh, are gonna be your homework assignment to go back and watch because you still need to understand the Mac V principles of entries and the filtering that I go into way more detail in the other videos. But tonight I'm gonna show you guys the new feature set that is inside of our Mac V. So, um, over here at the top left hand side, we've got our tide chart. Oh, I don't have these labeled. Um, need to, <laughs> I need to actually add some um, some code to fix that. Uh, we do have that. Yeah, I forgot to put that in. Dad gummit. 
I just realized I didn't put that in there. I've already got the code there, ready to go, and I didn't include it in this install. That's okay, minor adjustment, we'll put that in the next one, but uh, anyhow, so we got Tide, Tide, we got the Wave, and of course we have the Mac V, and then we've got the Ripples here for Ripple 1, Ripple 2, and of course these should be traversed like this, right? We're moving our way down, up and through, and then we are executing on big or small okay now some of that stay till the end and i'm going to show you guys some of the big small which comes into play when you look down here i can't really zoom in over there on the right but the atm strategy that we are using for big and small can you guys can you see this let me see if i can zoom into that yeah okay so we got big and we got small we're going to talk about some of that some of you guys had some questions on what do we do in markets that uh, kind of start to squeeze up on the tide, which is what we're currently doing. Um, great time to kind of talk about this type of stuff when the markets get like this, okay? Very simple, take a picture right there. The market looks like this, this is a particular map, okay? We get inside the golden ropes, what do we expect? We'll talk about some of that there at the end in the advanced stuff. So the MACV filtering now has some gray area. This is what we're also gonna call the shadow, okay? If you're taking notes, we are calling these shadows, okay? The MACV shadows. What do you do in the shadows? Okay, there are some things that we're gonna word, we're gonna word play in this. The trades inside the shade are shady. Haha, <laughs> you got that? A little play on words there. Okay, you're gonna have shady trades in the shade. Be careful inside the shade. Most of the time we want to avoid particularly big, big trades. Now, can you take trades inside of the gray areas? Yes, small trades, target one, maybe target two, but let's not get greedy while we're in the shade. You guys understand that? Okay, shady trades in the shade. You got it? Shady trades in the shade. Okay, be careful inside the shade. Now, does that mean you can't take any trades inside the shade? No, of course not. You can definitely take some trades and I'll, you're, you're gonna know the default very simply. Watch this. Okay, I'm gonna scroll over here to the far right and let's zoom in to see what's currently happening again right now it's after hours it's about uh 10 o'clock eastern time right now 10 p.m eastern time right now so after hours of course there's not going to be a whole lot so zooming into this section right here pop it back till it goes there we go a little bit bigger all right so what do we got here i'm gonna you know i'm gonna get even bigger we're gonna go super big here so we can look at the individual bars themselves okay so the bars on our on our MACV chart are kind of kind of be this basically boring, alternating colors of blue. Okay, I, and, and why do we not do the standard green red? Uh, that is, there are there is something to your mentality that changes when you see a red bar, or see a green bar. Your brain automatically starts locking. We don't really care the color of the bar. We are looking for structures and a lot of other things like our order flow scenarios to get into trades. We are in this section looking for structure, hence our coloring. So please don't go in and start changing all your colors and doing the things that you want. Look, I, I'm trying to teach you guys how to do it my way. Do it my way first, trust me. I know why, I have a reason for everything that we're doing here, folks, even the coloring. So just hang with me, do it my way, and I, I have a feeling that at the end, you will be glad that you did. Now, ultimately, at the end of the day, if you start beating me, okay, in your PL, then you know what, I'll let you come teach the class and you can change the colors up all you want, but hang tight with us and keep the colorings that are there. So as we are in our normal colorings in blue, as we come into a Mac V change on, let's use our yellow drawing tool here, okay? This is a red shift, okay? We are gonna be looking for, most of the time, you see a red bar and then to the right of it, we are gonna be looking for shorts, okay? We already know this, you know, these, this is not rocket science. Okay. But what do we do when we get like this, right? We've got, this is what we're trying to avoid is dealing with scenarios where we get these back to backs, what we call Christmas. Okay. You see a bunch of red green together. It's a perfect example right now going on right now. Okay. We've got this you know, back to back, red, green, red, green. We know that this is a dangerous place to play. In fact, as soon as these start to do this, I tell you guys, the default is, look, lay off, keep your hands off. In fact, today, if you look, um, today was a very tough day if you're you know, going in on MACV filter alone. If you, if you were very disciplined today and very diligent in your trading, you would know that the majority of today was basically gray, gray, gray. We had all kinds of 
no trade time, right? Especially in the morning, right? Look over here in the morning section. Where's 9.30 here? Let's go over here to 9.30 a.m. There it is, 9.30 a.m. open. You literally open up in gray, okay? We're in gray territory. Now here's 9.33, like there's about a five minute window where we're, you know, we get some good shorts right here. These are 13 ticks each on the NAS, on the S&P 500. So again, this pays out pretty well. If you catch even one or two of these bars, good trades in this section. Now, was it a bad trade in here? If you took, if you took a, a short in here? No, not too bad at all. In fact, if you come back and look in here, so our defaults inside of a gray zone are going to be the color of the bar. Very simple. Okay, let me show you guys what I mean. Okay, so if I have to take a trade, if, if I've got just a beautiful setup coming in on the, the algo bars, or I've got the Flowmaster just you know screaming at me to grab into a short, I look over here, as long as I've got red bars here, okay? Because inside the gray, the, the bars are gonna be the color that you need to be looking for, okay? You guys see this? So that's one of our features, is we've got red bars inside the gray. Here on the gray side, on this gray shading right here, I've got green bars coming in here, okay? So here we're gonna be looking for longs, here we're gonna be looking for shorts. Did you get a whole lot of good long out of this area? No, right? And hence the shadiness, right? This is why I say if you wanna just avoid trades in the shade, just avoid them all together, right? Now at the 9.30 open, look, there's gonna be some, you guys know how it goes, right? Around the open, anything kinda of goes. If you get a good setup, take a shot at it, look for target one, target two, push a one runner out there, don't get greedy with it, but you know, let's go for target one and target two in that first 10 minutes of the morning, right? Um, so the, the shading for our stuff here is gonna be gray, the bars are gonna indicate your colorings, but right here, past this section, this is where we know, okay, this is where the big trades could come, okay? This is what I kinda call open water, right? Now, we start to really open up, and you guys have gone and watched, go watch the MACV training videos on how we're, we're using this area as um, not entries. Remember folks, if you are new with us, we're not looking for entries in here. This is our filtering section. Um, unless we get a good setup, right? Like here's a beautiful setup coming in here. This is a, what's this called? Pop quiz time, you should know, right? That's a shark back play and a half right there. Remember these are 13 ticks per bar. So two bars, that's 26. And even if you get, you know, a tick behind on it, that's 25 ticks just for catching a single, um, single bar plus one, right? So nice little shark back play down short up in this area. But as far as the MACV filtering, it goes, if you are waiting for eight, okay, this comes back to go to the very first one on our MACV training. MACV entries are eight bars past the MACV turn, right? So the MACV turn comes on the bright vertical. That's this big vertical line up and down right here. Then we are to count eight bars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and there's our eighth bar, and now we are looking for trades. Okay, so we are, and what we're actually doing is keeping seven in the shade. The eighth bar is an active bar that you can take a trade off of. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. This one also counts, sorry, so I started to shoot a count and started here. Here we go, so this is bar one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven inside the gray. Here's the eighth bar that we are ready to rock and we are looking for shorts first off of this area. Now this is the spot where we're gonna be trying to look for bigger trades now after we are outside of the shade, okay? Same thing over here. So we start to push in this direction. Now this is one, I'm not sure why we got two greens going on here. What just happened here? This, um this looks shady. Not sure what's going on right here, actually. I'll have to go back and look at that. Uh, I'm not sure why that did that. I might need to refresh, I'm not sure what that is. Um, okay, so this should be that entire green section. I'm not sure why another green vertical showed up in there. I'll have to go back and look to see if we've got a bug. Um, I see the arrow change. It looks like this just flattened out like crazy, so it kind of popped down and popped up. Oh, and I've also, I know what this is. So I've also got, uh, so on mine, I do not have on bar close. So this is probably reevaluating again in the in the middle, I believe is what's going on here. Um, okay, so don't <laughs> pay not attention to that. If you guys see any more of those, they'll send them over to me in the screenshots, post them in the debug section, 
and I will see if that's actually a bug or related to um, on bar close setting in uh, in the in the indicator itself. Okay, so uh, let's look at here. Uh, let's go to, so we get the shift over to red. This is a little bit of a difficult area. Look at this perfect little spot right here. We're looking for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's our eighth bar right there. If we get a setup, all hopefully off of the algo ones, twos, the threes, we get some really good continuation in on this play. Remember each bar here is 13 ticks. So, you know, if we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's about eight bars of space. You know, eight times your 13, you're looking like almost 80 or 90 tick drop here off of this section right here off of this one. Now, this was between 10 o'clock and 1030. A little bit tough here right at 1010. This one happened right at 1010. We happened to get some of the best move here between 1010 and 1030 here this morning. And this is really usually a no trade zone time for us right there in that 20 minute window. But this happened to be a good section here today. Again, why I said today might have been a little bit more difficult. Obviously pretty easy here with the shark setup, shark back, top to bottom, 13 ticks for the first bar, second bar, maybe call it two and a half bars. This is a good 30, 35 tick drop down just to target one. And you get some major continuation out of that shark. That is a nice little play off of the shark back if anybody took the shark back there at 10 30 this morning now again i really didn't trade till the afternoon session and we'll kind of show some of the results from the room here at the very end of this video if we have time although we're trying to keep these videos in that 30 minute section so uh this is the main feature that you guys are going to be seeing in the new version is the additional mac v now other things we've improved on our performance things. Now, along with our performance enhancements, you'll notice that everything is launching faster, things are coming up quicker, etc. On top of all that, you wanna go and make sure that you get the latest version of NinjaTrader 8. And there is a .NET change. Now, the reason this matters, some people are like, well, I really don't like doing you know, Windows updates. I'm telling you right now, you want to do this one. This is called the .NET 4.8 framework, okay? Um, Microsoft has a .NET framework. It's just hard to explain if you're not a developer, but uh, essentially this is the pack that we can develop off of that NinjaTrader also has to use. In fact, there are some of the crashes that have been occurring when NinjaTrader 8 happened to be on something called the CLR. That is the common language runtime that is specific to the .NET framework. The old version that, uh, I wouldn't say the old, but you know, basically the current version that they had been on, they were using 4.0. Now we've got 4.8. This is going to be a big game changer. A lot of changes in that that are going to help. And I hope that they have fixed some of that CLR uh, stuff. And it looks like from what we can tell so far, it is just, it's night and day difference on the speed that's going on. So if you wanna install that, go and type in install.net 4.8, hit enter into Google's. And of course we got the old download, there we go, follow the instructions, install it, and then go to ninjatrader.com and download the uh, NinjaTrader 8 version. And I just want to download it. Let's type in download NinjaTrader. And download, direct download right there. Okay, now if you click right here, you're gonna type in your license, hit submit. I don't wanna click on that right now because then that's gonna actually put in my multi-broker license. And of course, you know, the internet and trolls and things. I don't want you guys necessarily using mine. Okay, so uh, anyway, put in your license key right there. You should have already gotten one in your email if you've uh, already got NinjaTrader. Pop that in there. Then that's going to give you a drop-down list for NinjaTrader 8. Install that one and then head on over to our website. And you're gonna go up to the top here and download. You can go to the free trial. There's a section here. You can click on the algo assisted training software. Lots of ways to go and download this, fill out the form. Now, of course, if you are a premium member and you've already been here with us for a while, you can go into the premium member section and there's a direct download link so you don't have to go fill out the form again. But if you're new with us, go ahead and click over here, hit the download form, type in your info. And of course, you know the drill. It'll send you an email with the links, all that good stuff. So three steps, step one, you go and install the .NET framework. This is to patch your windows, okay? It's part two, you're gonna go to NinjaTrader, go and update your NinjaTrader, get the latest version of NinjaTrader, and then third, go and get the latest version of AlgoBox and install them in that order. Now, before you do the install of AlgoBox, 
If you have, if you already have a version of Algolox installed, make sure you go and go to control panel and uninstall the current version. Let me repeat that one more time. Go uninstall. If you don't know how to do that, come hit us up in the Discord trade room. Uh, you know, somebody there will help you. Um, you know, along the way, there is a technical support move uh, or technical. Wow, well, technical support room move. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, technical support room down on the bottom left-hand corner of Discord. If you are having any issues, myself, Curtis, or one of the other moderators can get with you, and they'll try to help you out. Where is it? Tech support. Here we go. Tech support section. We got a lot of stuff going on here. Technical support. Hop in here and we will try to get your questions answered on getting any setups going. That's important. Now, let's go into uh, some questions here from tonight. Now, I think, uh, let me see, did I cover everything I wanted to on the Mac V? I mean, basically, now you don't have to count bars, right? That That's it. We're getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars inside the shade. This is the shady area on the eighth bar. This is a spot where you can start to look for an action entry. And of course, you've been with us for a while. Make sure, again, you're not taking this video all by itself. Don't you know trade anything alone. Don't take any single video alone. Go in and then after you've got this filter, so right now, what should I be looking for? I should be looking for reds, right? I'm looking for shorts, right? I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars. Boom, here's our eighth. We know that I should be looking for a short right now. We are passed on the red, right? So what do we got here? I've got a nice little setup like this. What is this, a cypher? We're already kind of pushing up and in, but I'm gonna go ahead and let's take a shot at it. You know, because of, let's see, what's our time frame? We're after hours here, looking at the tide and waves. This bar is not completed yet. Um, so I'm gonna go small on this first. Let's go. Order submitted. Sell a couple right here. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, some of the, actually this is, this is kind of some new features. If, you have, uh, if you're new to our Ninja Trader 8, some of the ATMs that we're already installing for Order you. We've got filled. the big, we've got the small, we've got uh, one of the, the new favorites. Let's go over here to the drop down here. Um, this has been in some of our previous releases as well, so this isn't brand new. Okay, this is a four contract trade, 10, 15, 25, and it's got a six, six auto. What does that mean? That means as the trade moves six ticks in your direction, we're already locking in profits, basically six, and now we're bringing into a minus six. So plus six, minus six, basically we're locking in. The worst case scenario, you're gonna lose six ticks after the first positioning um, moves up for you. That's automatically inside that ATM. I rec uh, you know, I'll have to do a whole separate video on those, but go ahead and check those out and play with those. But I do wanna talk about um, kind of big small here tonight for some of the questions that came into the room that people had asked about, hey, you know, I always put in, well, I don't say always, but all, sometimes I put in to the room uh, questions like, hey, long. what would you guys Look like to see? Okay, so this just went Short. Mac V Green, which Look tells me long. we're right back Look to like long. some Christmas tree sections here. So I should already be looking for an opportunity to bail out of this trade, right? So uh, the stop is, this is, this is a shark, okay. So I've got a shark coming in here. I am going to put my stop right back here, back behind the shark. And as this pushes into the shark back location, I, I'm going to try to add to this position short right at this red line right here. This is, this is active after hours. We do have a new bar on the 24 range here. Uh, I'm gonna come up here and right click and I'm going to Oh, actually, it's already there. So I'm going to punch sell market now. Order, punch or, order filled. All right, now I want to see if I can put this back to. So where's our target one? Target one is actually at my point of entry. So I'm going to sell two or, more or, here. Order filled. And I'm going to pull my stops in. We're going to keep our stops nice and tight on this one. Pulling into, looking for a shark back play here. And hopefully the market keeps moving quickly. It's after hours here tonight, so I have a feeling this is going to drag. But let's see if we can we can get to some examples here tonight. So small and big. Now, the, the thing I wanna talk about tonight uh, to answer some of the questions that came in, let's go up here and I'll show you some of the questions. Um, that came into the room here tonight to answer some of these. Let's go to, um, da, 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 da. 
Sorry, we had we had a lot going on here this evening. <laughs> I should have prepared this ahead of time. Success rate. Okay, we got some newbie questions. Okay. Specific question. All right, combining the confluence of higher ranges to lower while stalking a lower range entry. Verify the question. Okay, that's another question. When all the charts seem to be going different directions. Okay, so this is gonna be kind of, this is a combo, right? Neon and John, these kind of go together. This is why I wanted to talk about this stuff. So this question was combining the confluence of higher ranges, which are higher time frames if you are time-based chart. But again, we're still talking time frames. We are just using ranges. Okay, this is a big deal. Go watch our video on why if you're using time charts, you're losing money and why basically time charts should never be on your charts ever. There's a whole video on that, why time charts suck. Um, you might wanna go check that one out. So higher ranges and then stock and how to enter in on the lower range which also comes in with this question here. When all the charts seem to be going in different directions, half longs favorable, half shorts favorable, what do you do when you have such a limited trade time? What he's talking about limited trade time. Remember, we only trade for 60 to 90 minutes per session and we're trying to target our $500. That's our, our limit. That's the minimum that we're targeting in here is $500. If you've been following along, go watch our other videos. Again, don't take any of these videos one at a time. You need to go finish all of the video series in the playlist and you'll understand what we're talking about. So in the 60, 90 minute window, what do you do? He's quite, he actually kind of has a good, you know, he, he knows the answer right here. Do we just wait? Well, there's the answer. There's a short version of this. Do we just wait or do we look for a more advanced strategies? Does my question make sense? I'll look for a screenshot. So he did, he actually put in a great screenshot. Thank you, John. You did a fantastic job in also putting in your screenshot here. So what he is showing is you know, this is this is some more difficult stuff here. On the 89 range, what are we doing? We're coming into, you know, the uh, the golden ropes. We know this is going to be problematic right here in the 21 range. This is our tie. We got the wave here sitting right there on the ropes as well, basically right on the major moving averages, which tells me we're just kind of kind of, you know, probably going to suck it in right here. We're going to stick right here. We got a magnet holding us to this location. And then as he's scrolling over to the right, um, he's basically showing a couple of different things here. This has to do with how many days of data he's got going on. This is a whole other issue here. If you've got uh, two of these, you need to go to the higher time frame on the uh, Mac V. This is the correct one on the higher time frame. This one is actually incorrect. This just happens to be you don't have enough uh, bars of data to go to get you the information that you need. So if you're having this issue, um, go and check the number of bars. It just has to do with you have to go at least past overnight um, in order to have that there. OK, so that's 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 different. This is actually this, this is the answer to the question. I think he's asking, what do we do when we have Two of these saying favorable direction. You need to go to the one that is, oh shoot. I thought that was the Mac V. Hold on, go to the Mac V. Where's our Mac V? Um, do we have that on the Mac V? Wait a minute. No, we actually pulled that from the Mac V. Your highest time frame should be the most accurate one. So it was at the eight he had. I believe it was the eight. I go back to the screenshot. This one. Uh, yeah, so we basically want to go with the highest time frame here. This one is going to go back 500 bars and will include the previous day's data where this whole thing um, cal calculates from. So you want to go to rely on the highest one. Now, I don't know why your I don't know why your twos are accurate. Hey, this has this has to do with your setup, uh, John. I don't know if you do you have the latest. Yeah, you've got the latest too. It's 500. It should be 500 bars, but let's see. You had to have created this one. You know what, John? You got a good question there. I have to look at yours specifically. So <laughs> this is a scenario specifically with John's. I'd have to look at the number of bars on your data there. But in general, you want to go with the answer for your highest time frame or ask somebody in the room what there says to, just to confirm. But this one is going to be the most accurate for for this info. Now, the other thing you can always do is look over here on the left hand side, the very far left should answer that on the algo matrix. So it's shorts favorable should be pretty obvious. I'm, again, I don't know why yours here says that, but I know how it calculates and I know that that could happen if you didn't have enough bars of data. What is going on there? Wait a minute. Oh, you know what? This is just weird. How did you get this screenshot? This is the weird. Okay. <laughs> 
This is the open line. You have the open line on this chart, but you don't have it on these. Did you create your own charts? Okay, this folks, this is another reason why please use our templates. Okay, use our templates. To, if you're gonna create another chart, use our templates. This looks like you're missing, you're missing the open line on these. I don't know, there's the open line. So this literally just shifted. You took this screenshot literally right when this would have shifted. So it's just really weird. Odd question there, um, but this should apply to, sorry, I'm gonna go back to, uh, we're, we're doing this live folks can you tell um, so uh, I'm just I'm just gonna show you guys how we should be looking at um, kind of difficult areas like this we are gonna be looking at the highest time frame first to gather information about like what could be potentially happening we are looking for the biggest trades now the biggest trades are gonna be coming off of the higher time frames. but again are we actually gonna take a trade off of this are we gonna execute off of this absolutely not right if you've been following along with this you know that is a big big no-no we are not taking entries off of the tide we are gathering information from the tide we are never entering in on a tide this is gonna be just way too much heat on these we don't like heat around here folks we like to play it cool okay we're we are chill we are Low temperature, low stress trading individual. Oh, look at this beautiful cross showing up right here. Order, I'm gonna add two position order, short on this, and let's see if uh, let's see if we're gonna get some get some help from this little trade right here. Um, just in case we stop out, I'm gonna pull my stops right down in here, right behind the cross. This should be up just a little bit more, but I can always re-add to a position here. But right now we just had a shark back plus. A beautiful cross. I would have loved to have just waited for that little cross there, but for di um, for example purposes, I am trying to uh, I was trying to take this trade here, but this is not a great setup. We're coming in. MACV is now gone green right here. This is basically a no trade zone. We're just going to see if we can get a little bit out of this or not. It either will or it will not. But this is how we play the video game, right? There's our target one. Let me pull some more of these up into target one. Again, we are targeting small right now as the MACD is not with us. This is part of the process that I was just gonna tell you guys about. Like if we are going to go against any of our general rules for how we play, then I, I simply am never going to want to try to take a big trade. When you are trying to decide, the last thing that you're going to decide is big or small. Okay. Are you taking a big trade or are you taking a small trade? Now, some people call that a scalp. We don't really call it a scalp because to me, a scalp is like two to four ticks. Like you're just basically just getting nothing out of the markets. We don't do scalping around here. There is one trade that's like a scalp for us called the Plover. If you guys want to go watch a video strategy called the Plover, that is technically to me a scalping trade, but that is not in general like what we are trying to do here we're looking for big trades we are looking for hitting the home runs we are not normal traders we are exceptional traders okay now um this one while this continues to work let's talk about how we deal with what i call difficult market conditions from a higher time frame there are some days that are called candy days right candy days are just they are so easy i mean the markets are just moving we are getting good 20 25 tick movement we are getting all kinds of um area to move. Let's look at where our VIX is today. This is how we measure this. So go into our room, type exclamation mark VIX, and we will get a print out of our VIX reading. Now, the VIX has been kind of starting to lower for us. I mean, at one point this earlier this year, we were as high as like 70s or 80s. Uh, we've been playing anywhere from the 40s and 30s was the average for this year, and we have been absolutely just smashing it. Um, as the market starts to kind of calm down and we get into, again, normal market conditions around 13, 14, up to around 20 or so between, you know, that 13, 14 to 20, this is where normal market conditions are. Above that, you know, we're getting, we're getting more, we're getting paid for our time to sit, right? Uh, that's a beautiful trade there, Nick. I see that double move. That is a beauty. If you guys watched the last video there, that's that double. Oh man, double cross, double move. That's a beautiful one right there. So the VIX is around 20 or so. So I know from where we currently are, again, you need to kind of know context. First thing I'm looking at is context wise. If you've been doing what you should be doing every day is coming here, looking at the VIX, knowing approximately where we are. This is kind of your Geiger counter for how fast or how big the moves are in the market based on that VIX. The higher the VIX, the more the ticks, right? We have the VIX up, ticks up rule. VIX up, ticks up. There it is. 
right? VIX up, ticks up in our room. Higher the VIX, the more ticks we are going to make. When it starts to lower, we know we need to start making more decisions. So for instance, the reason that they were asking these questions today for higher time frames going into the lower is because, you know, today was a little bit, I would say more difficult. You start to get this area where you've got things in conflict. You've got some difficult reads because ultimately I could easily just look right here on the tide and knowing when the tide, when we get into the middle of the golden ropes, I already know that things are really going to slow down in here and that we're going to be getting some of that back and forth, a whole lot of back and forth really in this area, which means not that we can't take trades here. In fact, this actually is a great opportunity for reversal traders. If you really love, you know, being able to kind of smack the market back down the opposite direction, this is that type of area. No, no real continuations in this area. If you're going to be getting those continuations, oftentimes those continuations are going to be faking out and pulling back and going the other direction. Uh, in this type of area. So knowing that that can occur when you get into the golden ropes and that we're gonna kind of stick here for a while, anything that kind of moves out of an area into bands areas, great time to really use those Bollinger Bands that we've got and you know look for reversal trades in those zones. Okay, this trade is starting to work in our direction. It almost hit our stop by like one tick here. We might have a great example on our hands working out here. Just barely missed our stop. Again, this would have been a very minor Stop here, let's see if we start to get some of our targets. We got target one there at the front of the shark. Still a few more ticks down there. We'll see if that's gonna go there or not, or if this ends up pushing back up and going. It's after hours, it's taking a little bit longer than I was hoping that it would for an example. But as far as being able to read the markets on a day like this, here is what you should be looking at. I want you guys to pay attention here real quick. Let me zoom this in. Let's go big picture on this chart. Pay attention to these timing lines for me real quick. Have you noticed how powerful these lines are? Now, again, as we're moving left to right, if you're following on our timing lines, again, these are all included in our system, folks. These are not things that I drew by hand. These are all fully automated for you. You will see that, I mean, look at this right here, right? Do we, we get this perfect pivot zone and we start this whole section. We get double red dots in it. Where's the full move? We get the crossover point, and now here we are. What do you think is going to happen right here, right? This is going to be where the big moves are going to come right here as we get to this timing, right? We can see it. We can literally just wait it out, wait out these bars until we get over to this section. But again, is the waiting game fun? No, right? That's that's the hardest part. But John was accurate in that should you just wait? Well, the, the true answer is, yeah, you should just wait, right? You should really just wait. Now, if you're gonna scalp in there, absolutely. In fact, I mean, I was a t couple ticks in the green there a minute ago. You know, scalp in this area where there are difficulties, that's what you're really gonna wanna do, although that's not really our, our type of game. We're not looking to do scalps, right? That's not our bag. That's not what we're trying to do. Let's go look at this other timing line, though. Uh, so, tide and wave, two things that we're gonna be looking at right here, let's go to this one. Watch how many turns happen right on the major turning lines. Let's look at the pink ones, okay? Pink is gonna be our king timing, okay? Here's one, hmm, that's a nice move. Here's one, uh, not as much on this one, although a uh, decent move, and then drop and rip, okay? Let's go, let's see this one, okay? Is this the final spot or return? E yeah. Very nice. How about this one? This one, we do get that little move, but here comes the big white circle. What are we looking for? Well, we're looking for that continuation down move. Didn't come, we end up starting to hang up right here, pushing all the way up and in. What do we get? Oh my word, huge butterfly, beautiful drop. We are likely going to have a nice move coming out of the king timing. You're gonna see these turning points on these lines almost all the time. Look at each one of these lines, how often these are the turning points. This is the way to kind of use these higher time frames. Now, do I really wanna take a trade off of these? Again, if I get the setup, great. How often are you gonna get these? Are you gonna get them in a single hour? No. Are we looking to take trades off of this time period in general? No. Are we gonna get really big trades off of this area? Uh, yeah. This is, this is a great example, right? Look, going into this butterfly, if your stop is over the top of this, now I would prefer if we actually had something else in this, right? Now I have timing line right here. Did it get to the king? No. Would we have waited for this timing line? Yes. Do we have 
a perfect entry here? Do we have a um, do we have a moon here? No, we don't. Okay, I would prefer to have that with it. But when we get into this spot, can I go over here and look for my entry on my algo bars? You bet your butt we can. Okay. So as far as what Neon was saying, reading your higher time frame, go into this next one. Do I have a new bar here? Am I looking at a good spot for timing? Yes. Do I have a setup like this? I mean, this was beautiful. What time? When was this? Was this two o'clock today? Yeah, so this is the 220 to 240 area from today. This is a great spot to be looking for that drop off. And I, I'd have to go back and look around the two o'clock area on my charts here, but I imagine Target there was something filled. that probably set up at that spot on the lower time frame where we could enter in with basically no heat, right? And that's always our ideal, is trying to enter into a position with, you know, little to no heat. Um, there we go, we're hitting targets. We hit one of our targets already. It's nice. Uh, I think I've got the the audio, this is a dev box that I'm remoted into. I don't know that I've got audio sounds um, traversing on that, but there's target one right there. And let's see if we get any more out of this nice little shark back plus a cross. That is going to be a beauty. Uh, let me see here for a second. And... We'll see. Okay, so um, other things about answering that question. So we are moving from the tide, then the wave. This is the Mac V. Really, if you just wait for this Mac V, folks, like if you're actually going to be looking for entries, all of our setups that mainly come off of these two charts, you know that all of our strategies, all of my entry strategies that you guys see in the videos, the entry parts themselves, like this, right? How easy is that? You, you, you I mean, I don't know. There's a big red box right there. There's a perfect line right there, and there's a little cross-looking thingy, right? Like this is the video game. Okay, this is the this is the execution. This is where we press the buttons. This is where you know we make the money. Do we want the higher time frames in mind? Yeah, sure. I I want to when I would take my biggest trades. Hear me out. When I'm looking to take my biggest trades, before I'm like going all in, I want to make sure that yeah, I've got look. What was the last signal I saw on the tide? reds right so my default for my all of my big stuff right now should be what i'm looking for shorts okay so step one look at the tide and look at the latest signal okay i'm going to narrow this down simplest thing that you can do okay order of operations rules if you have not learned the order of operations go back and check it but to narrow this down the simplest form Okay, one, check the latest entry, okay, second, same thing. Okay, I really want both of these in my direction. Okay, and then Right there. Okay, simplest form. What did we just do right here? Remember, we either have target um, filled. Oh, are we hitting targets? We're hitting targets right now. I just heard target filled. Um, we'll go back and look at that. Okay. Your invitation for the twenty uh, trading championship. Count me in. Remember the video back where we talk about the ATMs. Okay, right here, big or small. This is the biggest thing right here. Which ATM are you going to choose? Okay, big, small. Small, 10, 15, okay? Big, 15, 25. See how simple that is? We are just collecting cash at target one and target two. This is where we put food on the table. This is what I talk about, you know, where you're going to make 
your make your money, put the food on the table with targets one and targets two. The bonus stuff is bonus. Okay, anything in those runner spaces, this is where when you've just got a great read. Now, anybody who's brand new with the system or anything, look, you're not gonna have to be, you don't have to be a freaking champion reading those things. Again, if you just simplify it like this, okay, what was the latest signal here? This is the simplest way to narrow it down. If you want a concrete method for checking what we should be doing on any entry, just simply go look at the 89. If you don't know how to read the 89, like, like it doesn't really matter, okay? I'm not teaching you standard garbage that you read on the internet, stuff you're gonna read in a book where you're like, oh, we're gonna draw a channel, and oh, I got the, uh, I don't know, I got the OBOS on this, and uh, I got the, I got a descending wedge up the, up the ascending wedge, and you know, because we've got the cross translation of the, you know, we don't need any of that stuff. All the stuff that's written in the books, they gave that to those of us quants and literally told us to rip retail's money from them. That's how we code this stuff now, okay? You don't want to be learning from books, folks. If you are, you are programming yourself for failure. Listen to what I just said. If you are reading books, learning to trade from books, you are being programmed for failure. I don't care what book you're reading. Trading in the zone, crap. Anything Tom Dante suggests to you, crap. Anything that any person ever sends to you is like, oh, I'll read this book, I'll learn how to trade. You are going to lose. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Write it down. I told you so. Here's another one for you. If it makes sense, it's going to lose you dollars. This is what I just said. If it makes sense, meaning if, hey, you know what? That makes a lot of sense. That makes That's a good idea. That is the worst idea possible because that what makes sense is exactly what cons someone into in a poker game getting you to go all in. Okay, they are getting you to go all in because oh that makes sense. I'm gonna do that right there. That makes a good idea. That's good sense right there. Now spell sense C E N T S. Okay, yeah, you might make a few cents. Okay, but you're gonna lose dollars. Okay, that's my that's my ism on that one. Can I backspace this all the way? Okay, all right. okay. and if it makes sense, it's gonna lose you dollars. Okay, all that mess. Now, so how do we narrow it down? Very simple. All I want you to do is if you're going to think about a big, all I care about, look, every question that we ever have comes right here on, is it going to be big? Okay. That's it. Look, we, am I going to take just about any, you know, form of it? Look, yeah, there are exceptions to this. I mean, if, if the market's literally leaning over, okay. And just dive bombing, am I going to take a long, I get a perfect, like, I don't know, headshot down there and the market's like dive bombing. Probably not. Am I going to take a swing at it with maybe two or three contracts? Probably, maybe. Okay, but am I going to swing for the fences with it? No. Okay, now that makes sense. Okay, with our system, it makes sense. You get it? All I care about, I'm always thinking about, am I going to get a big trade? Okay, am I going to get a big trade? And if these are not with you, then the answer is no. It's as simple as that. You guys got that? Have I narrowed it down? Is that simple enough for you? If you are not going with the tide or the wave, particularly, at least one of those, if you're not going with one of those, if you're going with both of them, hey man, you might have yourself, there are certain days, folks, that the market will literally hand you your entire year's salary where you're currently working. I'm not joking. Okay. Go look, go look for yourself, okay? And if you catch those days, which is what I help you guys practice in your final 40 days on how to you know, swing at those, because if you've never swung at those, look, you're not just gonna accidentally hit those the day that they show up. You're gonna have to practice them, okay? So check that last entry. All right, I'm beating this dead horse, but I want you to understand this. This is a difficult topic. That's why people are asking is advanced level stuff here. And we're going ahead and covering it here tonight just because, eh, you know, hey, we had some extra time and you know, why not? You know, the, the new wave feature stuff, yeah, it's not earth shattering. We've already been, you know, the Mac V stuff is already in the other videos. So, you know, I want, I want you guys to, to learn some stuff here from our videos and really come away with something good, okay? Check the wave, latest signal, okay? And really, what is it? It's red or green, okay? What do we got? Latest signal, red, green. Now, yeah, sure, it can be, you know, pink or blue, but you get the point, All right? Pink. Blue, all right. All we're looking for is, I should've done this one in green, shouldn't I? Is it gonna let me override that? Ooh, this is gonna be tricky. There we go. Now we've got some color going on. That's what I'm talking about. All right, red to green. What was it? Okay, 
this is it. Simple. Your filter is there, folks. And then when you're taking your entry, you're dropping on it. If it's with, if you already have these, then look, think about big. Okay. Don't be looking for, maybe you push target one out. That's my favorite thing to do. My favorite thing to do is grab target one and push it out farther. Okay. But we're only thinking about big. I don't care about the small ones. Look, the small ones take care of themselves. Okay. Sure. 10 ticks. Now, mind you, people, there's a lot of people out there were just, you know, they, they'd give their left arm for getting 10 ticks in a regular trade. Okay. That, I mean, technically we could live off of target one. If you wanted, I mean, 10 ticks, the, the, the amount of times that we hit target one, are you joking me? It's craziness, right? All right, um, have I beat that dead horse enough? I hope you guys get that. We are filtering there. I'm thinking about big or small. Then my final decision is on the entry, if I've got these with me, simple as great. I am going to execute. And am I going to do the small? Yeah, by default. Okay, here's my default. Okay, here's my default. It's always going to be that small. 10 and 15. Are you joking? 10 and 15 is awesome. 10 ticks plus 15 ticks. Yeah, I would call it small. But folks, when you're still going to be making Target more than $500 in a day at a minimum around here. And by the way, like, do you see people making 500 in a room? Like, that's not normal. Like, our targets, most of our people are hitting 1000 to $2,000 per day. That's like the average in our room. Go look. Okay, go look for yourself. Big money, big money comes through here all the time. It does not take a whole lot, right? With the leverage that we have in futures, uh, Warren Buffett said it the most famously, that risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. All this garbage you read on Twitter and people telling you like, oh guys, uh, only risk 1% or 2% on a trade, you know, but, but, but. dude, that's investment advice. That is, that's guessing advice, that's guesswork. Okay, we don't play that game. We know we've got multiple points of confluence. I'm not even showing you a signal unless we've got at least five points of confluence. And that's just one. And we're trying to add up two or three of those. So we've got 15 to 20 points of confluence when we're entering in, folks. You're wondering why we keep crushing it day in and day out? Yeah, there it is. All right, how do we do on this trade? Hey, this one's making us money, folks. You know what? Um... Man, I kind of wanted to just let this one. I think this one's going to keep going. I think we've got this. Oh, look at that target. Okay, first of all, let's let's zoom in right here. Do y'all see what I should be targeting down there? All right, what's that down there? That's my next PRZ, right? So my final target should be where? You see how we're adjusting this? This is this is on the fly. This is what we would want to do right here. Okay, why do we want to do that? One last thing here. This is a great, great example showed up here tonight. Look, folks, I just, I did not plan this. This happened off the cut. Uh-oh, what's wrong with my stop here? Pop quiz time, folks. What is wrong with where my stop is? It's not at the top of the cross, right? Oh, wait, did this, uh, did this auto on me? Hold on, hold on. I think I had him in the right place. I think this auto did for me. Let me look to see if I have this set. Oh, plus six, minus six. So when it went six ticks, it might have already moved that for me. That's all right. But where should these be, right? Our stop on these should be right here. Right? And this is one of the annoying things about NT8. I wish they would at least allow me the opportunity to do this like seven. Look at how annoying this is. Ninja Trader, if you guys are listening, which look, I know it's against your rules for me as, you know, technically I'm a vendor of yours, although I never use any of your stuff, but you know, hate me, turn me off at, at this point, you know, I don't know. Um, I'm not saying anything disparaging about you guys, but could you please put this feature back from NT7? All right, NT7 allowed, like as soon as I put these together, they grouped, like at least allow grouping or ungrouping or tell me where that is. Like I've looked for a while. You know what? Maybe I already have it. Now I feel bad if it's, if y'all have had the, if it's already there, if somebody knows the answer to this, why, how I can like not have this where these will all combine when I drag them on top of each other, right? So I know it's nice that I can drag this out, but when I go like this and I snap these together in Ninja Trader 7, this became one tag where I could just grab one tag or I don't know, can I hold shift and move this whole thing? I haven't tried that yet. Shift does it? No. How about control? Control shift, does that do it? Control. Oh, it says attach. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Um, well, it looks like there's some other things that can be done. How about alt? Nope, alt didn't even do it. So, you know, there are new things about an NT8, folks, good, bad. Ugly, but hey, doesn't matter. With Algobox, if you've got it installed, I mean, it's gonna kind of be hard not to make money, I'll be honest. 
It's kind of hard to lose if you're following the rules, folks. All right, um, man, we've covered a lot there. I am past my 30 minutes. Oh, we're at 50 minutes. Hey, did it before an hour. Hope you guys got a whole lot from that. Um, I have a feeling that's gonna go all the way to target. Now, why would I, what's that down there, all right? That's a PRZ. How do I know what that's going to be a PRZ for? That is for a 50 cent. Now, what do I love about those? Oftentimes, 50 cents are the most pierceable harmonic, so. I even more so want to leave this there as a target. This is a beautiful, beautiful play coming in right here. I should be moving these targets out, but I wanna hear the sound of it hitting targets because I heard it earlier. It was very subtle. Did you guys hear the, the target filled sound? Maybe, I, oh, you know what? I forgot, I got my audio way down. Let me turn it up a little bit. We... Target filled. Oh, that's a beautiful sound, isn't it? Listen to it. Did y'all like that? Do you like, do you like that feeling? I do. I love that sound. Love it. Target oh. oh, we just hit another one. Hold on. Live in real time. Here we go. Is she gonna keep going? Is she gonna keep going? Is she gonna keep going? Man. Thank you for that little beautiful setup that came tonight. Folks, this was not planned. That literally just happened on the fly. What was going against me on that? Well. We had our nice little red set up. We were going, entering in, trying to go here. What did I have in my lower time frames? You guys follow how we did this while this is waiting because we got to wait anyway. So I'm just going to gab on here as we go, right? We know where we are in the 89. Am I going with the 89? Yes, I am. On the left-hand side of the algo matrix, is that with me? Yes, it is. Is the last signal on the wave, is it red? Yes, it is. On the Mac V, when I went to the filtering, was I red when I entered this? Yes, it is. The only reason I'm not gonna be swinging for the fences is what? Well, the Mac V turned green on me, right? It would have been more ideal had that not turned, but uh, what did we have here? This is technically called what? What is this entry we got here? I think I first started entering in on that cipher though, didn't I? somewhere around the cipher, back of the cipher-ish. Um, we got in on the shark back, we added to position on the cross, we adjusted our stops, should have been at the back of this, right? This is generically called what? PRZ cross, right? PRZ cross, that is a harmonic cross. Yes, we got the harmonic with the, let me see if I can get my, there we go, box is working, right? We got the red box. We got the cross, crosshair, boom, right? And if you have watched the shark back video, you see that line right there? Let's zoom in, zoom, zoom, zoom. You see that, you see that bright red line right there? That is your entry for, what's that called, the shark back. Target filled. Oh, we're hitting targets. Shark back plus a cross. Are you joking me? Awesome play right there. Now I would normally take that without the cross, right? We got the cross, so what did I do? I add to position. Again, why am I gonna add to position? Look, I, sure, I am, remember when we were playing our game, we're looking to toe in the water, quarter position, Target half filled. position, full position. Right, when am I gonna go full position? When I got more things lined up with me, right? If I just had the shark back, what should I be playing, right? Four or eight contracts, right? Right, again, now for me, let's, well, let's talk about that. Uh, what's my normal size? Let's, uh, again, this is review, but while we're waiting for this to, I think it's gonna hit all targets here. Let's see if it keeps going. I mean, I don't know why it wouldn't, why it would stop right there and turn around, so let's, let's let it roll here. Let's do some more training, right? While we're on a roll. Um, we got two minutes till an hour. So, standard size, 16 contracts for me, okay? So, what does that mean for my position? So, I've got... Target filled. Oh, we're hitting targets. All right, folks. Let's see. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Game over. Beautiful. Let's see what we're going to come away with. See if she's going to push it all the way. Give me all my targets. Give it to me. So let's um, 
So what do we have? Two. So two to four contracts, that's toe in the water, right? Four contracts is gonna be a quarter position for out of the 16, right? Eight is gonna be my half, Target filled. right? 12 means I'm a little more, short. you know, I got a, maybe short. maybe one additional thing with me. Am I, when I'm getting this full 16, that means I've got lots of things, right? On this last contract, I think it looks like I got up to 18. So, and I call 16 plus. You'll oftentimes see me around 20, 24 contracts when I'm very interested in a trade, when I feel really good about a trade, I'm looking to get to 20 or 24 contracts. Do I rarely get into the 30s? Rarely, very rarely. I mean, I've gotta have, I mean, the sky's gotta be just falling and it's gotta be absolutely just calling my name that I have got to take that trade, okay? For me to be able to go full. Now, what's my max position size? 40, okay? So if my standard position size is 16, my absolute max that I am comfortable trading is 40. Now, does that mean I can only trade? Yeah, of course, I can trade more than that if I wanted to, uh, the way that our stuff works. So what is what is 40 contracts? 40 contracts is $20,000, okay? So again, futures contracts, everything that we do here is way different than any stock stuff. All that PDT rule stuff, like PDT says you have to have $25,000, okay? So anybody who's like, oh man, he's trading 40 contracts, that's so much money. Are you joking me? Compared to stocks, stocks you have to have 25,000. I'm not even using the baseline 25K to run 40 contracts. Do you guys understand that? Think about that. All right, folks, that's your lesson for tonight. What a beautiful thing, man. I need to take a screenshot of this, hold up. That is screenshot worthy, folks. That's a beauty. Long, look for a long. And I'm a beast. Oh yes. All right, folks. That's a wrap. Thanks for hanging out short. for me, Pippi, Robbie, look Lunchbot, Mod Squad, Curtis G, long, and the rest of the gang. I'm sitting out in the Big H town. See ya. Trading has been hard.
Look for a long, short. Look for a short, long. Look for a long, short. Look for a short. I'm on my own, broken alone. I feel the rain crashing down. All around this empty town, I'm searching for the lost and found.